So, Red, White, and Royal Blue is the story of Alex Claremont Diaz. He's the first son of the President of the United States. Very exciting. First son, all right? Like, he's ba- basically American royalty. Uh, and Alex has a small but budding rivalry uh, with a prince of England, uh, Henry. Um, so, son of the president, son of, uh, I think it's the king. And yeah, it's the king in this movie, uh, uh, Henry. Uh, they both don't really like each other. Uh, but then, at a social gathering, uh, the two of them accidentally have a, have a, have a bit, of, bit of a run-in, a bit of a fight. Alex gets a little tipsy and tells him, you know, I don't like you. The two of them get in a fight and they end up having this whole cake spill on them. Everybody sees it. It's a huge PR scandal all over the world, right? Like, son of the, pres- son, son of the U.S. president, son of the, uh, uh, son of the king are fighting. Uh, the two of them have to go on a, like... I don't know, a couple week like PR junket to try to be like, no, we're cool. We, we, we hang out, you know, like we're great. Things are good. It was funny that that happened. We, they, you know, it was intentional. Try to try to kind of shape it around being cool. Um, but then on the road, they suddenly start to figure out that like, they're actually pretty cool with one another. Like they're actually, they're actually pretty neat when they get to know each other. And then uh, surprise, uh, they're super cool with each other and they start a relationship. They're gay. Gay boys. I don't believe it, right? <laughs> uh, a pro- pro- prominently gay story. It reminds me of Bros when we covered that on the show, right? Like, not the kind of thing we see often. Uh, and Red, White, and Blue gets surprisingly spicy. Not Red, White, and Royal Blue. Not as spicy as I figured it would. I, I thought I was going to be getting, like, Game of Thrones-level nudity. Not quite. You do see a couple of butts. But otherwise, like, these two guys are surprisingly charming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no shaft, lots of butts. Like it, it is what it is. Not even lots, but uh, our two leads, uh, Taylor's Taylor Zakar Perez uh, and Nicholas Galitzin, are a delight. Uh, we're gonna get to see them more, especially Nicholas Galitzin in Bottoms, uh, which comes out this Friday in select theaters. I'm hoping we can watch it for the show, Andy. Um, that's that. That's that uh, uh, kind of Rachel indie comedy Sennett, starring Rachel the indie Sennett, Sennett, and yes, and Ayo Edabiri from uh, The Bear and uh, uh, TMNT. She's the new April O'Neil. Uh, the two of them play high schoolers who start a fight club. They're gay high schoolers who start a fight club. And Nicholas Galitzin is a very American football jock in that movie. And in this movie, he's a prince of England. Uh, thick accent. Seems to play both really well. He's been getting some attention, so excited to see what he is. But... Uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue, that is the movie based on the book. Andy didn't see it, so I should give Andy an opportunity to, I don't know, jump in and ask something, or let me breathe a second and I can figure out what I'm talking about next. Andy, what do you think so far? Are you on board? So, yeah, so I heard a little bit about this uh, coworker who was actually talking to me. Um, and uh, this is so this is based on a novel or a, a written work uh, of some sort. And there, there's been... Uh, it's a good adaptation, but it's not a great adaptation from what I what I've heard. There's a uh, you know just a lot of nuance kind of left out because sometimes you you have to cut for time. Um, but overall, it, it it has been. Uh, I think I think fans of the book are happy with it. So I'm gonna say uh, it's definitely based on a book. Uh, my beau Christine loves that book. By the way, uh, she's got a few copies of it. She'll tell you all about it if you ask her. Uh, so she was excited for the movie. That was the reason I ended up watching it. And at first I was like, man, two hours long. Okay. Like this is, <laughs> this is gonna be a little rough, but I could say confidently, well, I don't think red, white and Royal blue is necessarily like cinematic in its presentation. It falls perfectly in line with any like Hallmark romance or Netflix holiday romance you've seen. It, it like skewers that medium. Perfect. It reminded me of a lot of those cheesy Netflix, uh, Hollywood features like, uh, God, I can't, you know, now that I'm here, I can't even remember the name of them. There's a couple of them. There's like a, a, a knight for a prince and a, a queen and snow queen. And I'll remember after the movie and after the show and kick myself for not saying them. But um, it's definitely like made for TV, but in the best way. It's charming and it's light. Like, yeah, it's a lot of sets, a lot of softbox lighting, um, but surprisingly witty script. Uh, Casey McQuiston, the writer, helped helped put together the film, which is always, I think, a lift. If you're writing a film based on a book, she kind of helped adapt it. And from what I understand, it's a pretty solid adaptation. Nary a few uh, uh, kind of interesting things. But I did want to talk a minute about our cast. Uh, Taylor Zakar Perez as Alex uh, and Nicholas Galitzin as Henry are really great. I've never seen either of them in anything. They're both really great. I'm looking forward to seeing them and more 
Um, they, they, I, I was, I was watching this and thinking, who are you going to be in the Marvel universe? Who are you going to get? <laughs> who, are you, who are you two going to get scooped up as? Right. Because you're, you're, you're both going to go on to do other things. I would imagine, like both really solid. Um, it, it, Alex uh, actually is uh, like a bit of a firecracker, not very, not very well buttoned up, but passionate. He's political uh, and actually gets involved doing politics in Texas, uh, a la Beto O'Rourke. If you're a Texan, it looks a lot like him. Uh, in the movie, in movie, he's got like the button up with the sleeves rolled up and the one button down like he's doing his thing campaigning or whatever um he is a first timer never actually been in a gay relationship whereas uh henry of course uh, who's very buttoned up and very posh and very prim and very proper uh has been in a gay relationship before and kind of explains how things work uh, you know and 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 they 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 end up doing their own thing but what's interesting is both of them end up coming out to their respective parents. Uh, Alex coming out to his uh, presidential mom, I should say, the president's a woman in this one, oh snap, uh, who's played by Uma Thurman, who I have not seen in a movie in a really long time, uh, especially outside of a Tarantino production. She's got this like buttery Southern drawl accent that didn't really work for me, but has been getting a lot of praise online from fans. Like they, they're like, oh my God, Uma Thurman's great. All right, yeah, you, you guys got it. What do I know? Uh, he comes out to her and she's like, Really? Oh, that's wild. Okay, cool. Well, you know, <laughs> be your own person. Be safe. Do we need to talk about condoms, right? Like, meanwhile, Henry is like absolutely cannot cannot be gay. He's he's a prince of England, right? Like that is not an option. He is royalty, and this is his whole life, and that's what everything is. Uh, so you do get some good good something in the third act. I actually like that the movie kind of steps off of Alex being the subject in act three and really steps onto Henry gives the relationship something robust but I'm also satisfied to say not only has this movie done well on Amazon Prime but uh, the director said they wanted to do more I think Casey McQuiston wants to do more she just did this AMA on Reddit where she talked a bunch about um, what she wants to do with the characters like it seems like there will likely be more from this because it's been really successful and I'm pleased to say, like, that's not just because it's a whimsical story. It's because it's, like, functionally a fun project. It's not it's not big cinematic. Like I said, it wouldn't play good in a theater. But, like, on a streamer, it, like, rock solid. Like, they they, they knew exactly what they were aiming for. They, they shot their target and landed it. Um, really comes out great. I was really pleased with it. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about kind of the script and kind of the acting. But, Andy, any, any thoughts before I jump into it? I know i got to wrap this up. Wait, what? Well, I was just going to say, uh, kind of broad question, what works the best about this movie and what kind of works the least? So I think the thing that works the best is our two leads. Um, at the open, I would not think these two are going to be capable of carrying a compelling relationship. Dude, they totally do. Like, it's bananas how good they are at it. I'm not even sure if if either of them are really gay, like, because they just fall so, so well into their characters. Maybe they both are. Maybe only one of them is. I, I couldn't even tell you. I don't know. I don't know a lot about the men. But what I do know is that the two of them are, like, shockingly convincing um, in their empathy for one another. Like, start, like the, the plot's real cheesy when you just say it at the top, right? Like, the elevator pitch of this movie. Two, two, two people that are basically royalty don't like each other, then they fall for one another, but they, they're star-crossed lovers and they can't be together, right? Sounds like, sounds like Romeo and Juliet. But what works is it's surprisingly progressive. Well, I shouldn't say surprisingly. It's very progressive. Uh, and it's a good script. Like, the, the dialogue's really bouncy. comes right out of the book. Uh, when they don't like each other in Act 1, it is like dripping with sarcasm and they can't stand one another. But in Act 2, they kind of warm up and realize, okay, this is the reason we didn't like each other. Now I get it. And in Act 3, they're like really great. And and as people start to figure it out in the administration, like Secret Service, like sees the two of these guys like running into a room together and they don't, you know, they don't say anything. They just stand there with sunglasses. And then like when the president's like top advisor played by, God, what is her name? Uh, Sarah Shahi. She's great. She plays Zara. Um, she figures it out. She has like a melt. She has meltdown. She, she ends up like storming into Alex's room one morning when he's supposed to be at a press junket. And she's like, I heard a, a girl in here. Where is she? Where, where is she hiding? And she like opens up the closet and there's the Prince of England and his boxers. And she's like, Oh my God, <laughs> this, is the, this is the worst thing that ever happened in the whole world. Like really a delight, like really funny, like surprisingly, surprisingly well put together for what's here. Like it, I feel like it would have been easy to phone this in and kind of do it wrong, but no, like you, they, they very specifically were aiming at kind of the Hallmark angle, like the straight to Netflix angle, the like light rom-com that just doesn't hurt anybody's feelings. And like, I think it's good. I think, I think that was part of the problem with bros is bros really tried to come out 
and be big and cinematic. And then you actually see the movie and you're like, eh, you can wait for streaming. This isn't actually really anything you need to, you know, you need to go pay $17 for a ticket for. But this is like comes with your Amazon subscription. Like, great. Like rolls over really well. Recommends the book. I oh, God, I forgot about that. Like when, at the at the opening close, that pops up a little link that's like, "Hey, <laughs> buy, buy the book here on Amazon." Like they know what they're doing, um, and I think that works really good. The thing that doesn't work, I, I think, like I said, is is uh, runtime. Look, I, I know we watch a lot of movies on here, and I know it's wrong for me to say two hours is too long for a movie, but like come Act Three, I was really wondering like where's this gonna go like it seems like they've kind of figured it out and they're kind of gather together and that's when it rolls into things are not so great over in england like it seems like seems like oh alex talked to his mom she's great with that right Mad- madam president has no problem with her son being gay uh the king however huge problem <laughs> <laughs> son being gay we have to hide it this isn't real there's there's a there's a there's a media leak and it, it, it breaking news and people have there's like photos on the front page of the two of them kissing and and the king's like nope nope we're denying all of it none of it's real none of it happened and and there's so there's some back and forth there but um ultimately like i feel really good about saying uh as somebody who'd not read the book as somebody who knows somebody who's read it and likes it a lot but it never really engaged with it like i had a genuinely good time watching it. a solid date movie right you need something to throw on for a couple hours you got you got a partner who's interested maybe like throw on red ribe and royal blue not a bad time funny surprisingly funny couldn't believe how funny it was but i think that comes from the book um overall real good and i should get to recommendations because like i said i've been talking about this one too long andy hasn't seen it i don't want to give it too much away from him um so any other questions andy before i jump into uh whether or not I'm ready. <laughs> Would I recommend Red, Red, and Royal Blue? Yes. Yes. A thousand times yes. Yeah, this movie's super fun. I like this movie a lot. I, I don't think it's a bad time. If you have Amazon Prime, throw it on. Throw it on in the background or sit down and watch it, right? Give it a go. You might even want to get the book. It's not a bad time. Red, White, and Royal Blue. Good stuff. Can't wait to see uh, these two boys in other projects. Uh, I, also, I should... I know I mentioned it before, but Andy, we should totally go see Bottoms if we can. That movie looks really funny. Yeah, but um, yeah, I've heard a lot of buzz about it. I'm I'm definitely interested to see that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can find a maybe we can find a screen in town running up. Anyway, God, that wraps the show. What are we on? Episode two twenty four of Off Script. Good lord. Next week two twenty five. Big week at the movies. Andy, what are we watching? We are watching uh, finally Gran Turismo. Uh, which was supposed to come out a couple of weeks ago. They delayed it to uh, try to get some more buzz since uh, with the writers and actors strike, uh, there can't be any promotion for films coming out right now. Uh, So it's finally coming out. Uh, This is the race car story about the gamer who becomes a professional race car driver. This uh, stars David Harbour and Orlando Bloom is kind of the racing team. Uh, That's coming out. It's directed by Neil Blomkamp, uh, director of District 9 among a bunch of other films, but people seem to only remember District 9. And we're going to be taking a look at an indie film called How to Blow Up a Pipeline, which is on Hulu, uh, August 24th. This has a little bit of buzz about it. It's about a group of kind of uh, suburban eco-terrorists, uh, you know, idealistic uh, environmentalists who, you know, they want to blow up, you know, some infrastructure to kind of prove a point or to, you know, be... Uh, cause a revolution something like that I heard a little bit of buzz about this that's coming out on on hulu the the 24th uh definitely excited about how to blow up a pipeline like indie flick about people doing the wrong thing for the right reasons amazing can't wait like moral conundrum getting a copy of the anarchist cookbook and making thermite in a bathtub like looks great can't wait sounds fun <laughs> Uh, I'm not too stoked on Gran Turismo, man. You remember what I said? Blue Beetle being paint by numbers. There's a final trailer for Gran Turismo. I swear it gives away every single plot beat of that movie. I'm like, why? I just saw the whole mil- the whole movie. Why do I got to spend two hours watching a longer version of it? But hopefully Blomkamp's good stuff. I know audience reviews for it are solid. Critic reviews are middling, I think. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully I'm surprised by Gran Turismo. Either way, keep hearing off script for more. I'll be talking about it next week on episode 225. Uh, if you like the show today, best way to keep up with is just subscribe. 
to subscribe to the show on your favorite platform. We're on Facebook, where we live stream the show every Tuesday. We're on YouTube, where we're uploading our full videos, individual reviews, this new format we're doing on video. If you want to come check it out, that's where we're at over there. Huge things going on on YouTube. Uh, we're on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, our media, all the usual places you get your audio podcasts. You can check us out there. And of course, we're on Twitter, Instagram, all the usual social media spots. You can follow us over there as well. Leave a rating and review. Comment if you can. Uh, you can mail us, email us at... Uh, mail at oscarfilmreview.com and you can check out our website oscarfilmreview.com for more exciting interviews things we're doing keep up with us over there and uh, everywhere else as well you can swing it support your boys here at Offscript here on episode 224 and uh, boy that wraps the show from all of us at Offscript the home of Bold Cinema I'm Zach Lewis and I'm Dr. Draper thanks for watching <laughs>